Good afternoon everyone. In this video I'll be showing you how easy it is to change the engine oil and the filter in your car. The very first thing that you need to understand is to what grade of oil your car needs. If you check in the owner's book or phone up the local service centre you'll be able to find out. And the typical, um, typical oil change, I'll take my car for an example. My car, in the logbook, it says it takes 15 W40 oil. Now, I'm not going to go into great depth as to what everything it means, but I'm just going to give you a basic overview here so you don't manage to cock things up. This is the cold rating number, i.e. the winter number. And this is the hot. That's the hot. That is the cold. The last number, the hot number, we've got to keep this the same. So if your car takes a 1540 oil, we've got to keep the 40 the same. Majority of cars these days either take a 20 or a 30 weight oil. My car being a bit older, it takes a 40 weight oil. So we must keep this the same. The first number, however, there is a bit of variation with this. So ignoring the second number for a minute, because we've got to keep that one the same. The first number tells you the rating when it's cold. Now my car can take a 15 weight oil. But this number, there is a bit of play in it. We can actually go better on these grades here. So these give you better protection in the cold. So a 10 will give you better protection than a 15. A 5 gives you better protection than a 10. And a 0 gives you the best protection of the lot. My car, being quite an old clattery diesel, is designed to take 15 weight oil. However, the, uh, the oil that I've chosen to put in is quite good quality Castrol Magnatec. And as you can see, it is 5 winter 40. 40, as I say, we've got to keep the same because that's the hot rating and we can't we can't do anything to change that. But I'm going to put some nice, good quality 5 winter uh, rated oil in it. I say I can put 15 in, which is significantly cheaper, but I like to uh, keep my engine in good nick, so I'm going to use the uh, the better protection for the uh, for the colder winters. Now, say for example, say for your example, your car was designed to take 530 oil, which is a very, very, very common uh, oil these days. Say it's 530. These ratings here, of course, which represents this, has got to be 30. So you've got to choose an oil that has 30 as the last two digits. And it must be either 5 or 0. You can't go bigger than this. If your car is designed to take a 10, you can either use a 10, 5 or a 0. If your car is designed to take 5, you can either use a 5 or a 0. You can't go back up on this. It's a ratchet system. You can only go down. So say my car's quite old. It can take a 15, but I'm going to put a 5 weight in it. If yours is rated a 5, you can either put 5 or 0. So realistically, it's not it's not that difficult system to understand. As I said before, just to sum it up, the last number, this number here, must stay the same. You can't alter that. If your car is designed to take a 30, you must put a 30. If it's designed to take a 40, you must put a 40 in it. This number can be lower, but can't be higher. Simple. It's also worth noting, when you're changing the oil, it makes every sense in the world to change the oil filter with it. There's no point putting nice clean oil in if you're going to filter it through a dirty filter. The oil filters that I, that I get, I get these on the internet, and it's worth noticing if you're doing a lot of your own oil changes, instead of going into the parts department at your local store and buying these for, uh, for quite an expensive amount of money, as soon as you buy one there, you can get the part number from it and order them directly. I order my order filters, oil filters either specially, either directly through Fram or I tend to get Bosch ones as well. Just so happens I have a Fram one in, but they do make various brands for each car. So make a note of the uh, of the filter number and you can buy these directly off the internet. The same goes, for example, with these fuel filters I have here. These are exactly the same. You get the part number. You can order them for anywhere on the internet for significantly less price. As for oil change intervals, many people choose to change their oil around the 10 to 12,000 mile mark. I'm not sure what that works out in kilometres in Yankee terms, but in the UK, 10 to 12,000 miles is what the books recommend. Modern cars tend to have these ridiculous 25,000 miles between oil changes. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's a fully synthetic oil, this, you, you, could, you can change it every 25,000 miles. I think that's personally a load of crap. I do my oil every 6,000 miles. The vehicle that we're going to be doing the oil change on today, in the logbook, it does recommend 6,000 mile oil changes. Although, latterly, when that engine was fitted to more modern vehicles, they upped that to 10,000 mile intervals. But I'm going to stick with what the book suggests for mine, which is a 6,000 oil change mile mark. This is the car that's in question today for its oil change. It's just done 6,000 miles, the oil is due on it. I've taken the vehicle for quite a nice long drive, so the coolant temperature is up, the oil temperature is also up. We always do oil changes on cars when the oil is thinner, as it comes out easier and drags any sludge out of the engine with it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jack the vehicle up on the one side, I'll show you underneath and show you exactly what we are going to do. 
Okay guys, what I've done, I've jacked the vehicle up on the side that the sump plug isn't on. I know that the sump plug is on the left hand side here, so what I've done, just to aid the drainage of the oil, I've jacked the vehicle up on the right. So if you're unsure which side the sump plug is on, have a quick skeet under the car, and if the sump plug is on the left hand side, jack it up on the right. If the sump plug is on the right hand side, jack it up on the left. It will just aid, it just aid the oil coming out, making the oil coming out uh, that a little bit easier. Plus the fact by jacking the vehicle up, it gives you extra room to uh, manoeuvre underneath if you don't have the luxury of a pit or a ramp. Okay guys, we are now under the vehicle. We can see the uh, sump plugs here. There are also uh, there are two sump plugs on this vehicle, funnily enough. I'm not too sure why. Um, I think one of them might be for a oil temperature probe that was never fitted to this vehicle. I'm not too sure, I'm not going to dwell on it. We can see here we're going to remove the lower sump plug on the bottom of the engine. Now sump plugs sometimes are on the back of the engine like this. This is the back of the engine facing the rear of the car. Sometimes they are underneath actually on the bottom of the oil pan. But they, you'll see them around somewhere. Usually they're tilted to one side. As I say this is the side that is now down on the ground. The side that has been raised is behind me here so that they, there's a definite slope on the oil pan this way. So it's going to aid the oil uh, in draining out. We want to be careful that we don't mistake this drain plug for this drain plug over here which is the uh, gearbox oil drain plug we don't want to be draining the uh, the gearbox oil drain plug here by mistake we want to make sure we've definitely identified the engine oil drain plug so here it is i've got a nice uh, it's a bit tight for space under here and i've got a nice big bucket underneath to catch the uh, the waste oil so what i'm going to do i'm going to find the appropriate spanner to get that off some sump plugs have uh, allen key drives, some of them have torx drives, some of them are like this, they'll take uh, sockets. It just depends on each model, every single model will be different, so you'll have to look under your car and find out exactly which one suits you. But on this 2001 Citroen Synergy, which actually has an engine from 1999, this, uh, this takes a 21mm uh, socket. So as you can see, I can't exactly get my socket set in here, so what it's worth doing is just temporarily just moving the bucket out of the way until you uh, until you get the uh, the nut cracked off. Now I do very regular oil changes on this car, so I can't imagine this being too difficult to get off. Now it's very difficult trying to do it with one hand, of course, trying to film it. So we'll see how we get on. Oh, I shall swap my hand round. Excuse the angle of the camera; it is not the easiest thing to film. And I'm going to locate it on and righty tighty loosey left. Oh god. He says there it goes. Right now that's coming loose. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick my bucket back underneath it. The bucket's now underneath. I'm going to if I can get a better view of the camera, I'm gonna unscrew it. And what I'm gonna do, as I unscrew this, I'm gonna keep it pushed in so that as soon as the oil doesn't fire out, it doesn't fire all over me and also drop the sump plug into the bottom of the bucket. So if we look what I'm going to do, I'm going to unscrew this and I'm going to keep it pushed into the engine. You'll start to see a bit of oil dribble out, but I'm going to keep it pushed into the engine until the very last moment when I can feel the clicking of the thread and I'll whip it away in a heartbeat. So I'm keeping it pushed in. As you can see, I'm keeping it pushed in. There's not any, no oil dribbling out yet. I'm keeping it pushed in. I'm keeping it pushed in. I'm keeping it pushed in right, I can feel it dribbling out, I can feel the oil. I'm going to whip it away in a heartbeat and the oil should start to flow. There it goes. And I've kept hold of the sump plug nut in my one hand, which I will put down to the side. And you can see here, the oil's nicely uh, flowing out of the engine. Nice and hot. Be careful you don't burn your fingers on it, because as I say, it is, uh, it is quite hot. The engine is still warm. And there she flows. It's also worth noting, if you've got a small bucket to catch the oil in, this bucket is quite big, I use this oil, I use this bucket to collect waste oil in because it, nice uh, it is a nice big bucket, that uh, the angle that the oil obviously pours out at will vary, so sometimes it may trickle down the side of the sump here, it can trickle down like it is doing now, it will trickle down and pour off various places of the sump, so you may have to relocate the bucket to catch it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get out from under the car and I'm going to let the uh, let the rest of the oil drain out of the engine. And I'm now going to show you how to change the oil filter while we let the rest of the dregs drain out. Now that the rest of the oil is draining out slowly underneath the car, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the oil filter. 
Now, I can't speak for every car on the planet, but some cars are either a nightmare to change the oil filter or some of them are easy. It just depends on exactly what your car you've got and the location that the manufacturers decided to put the oil filter in. Now, fortunately for us, the oil filter on this car is really easy to get at. I'm looking at it on the front of the engine here. We can see the nice blue filter there, right on the front of the engine. Loads of room to get a hand around it. There's various pipes and cables, but these move out of the way very easy. So, uh, PSA, Peugeot, Citroen, they didn't do a bad job of designing this engine where they put the oil filter. Some cars are a nightmare, some cars put it underneath the wings, some cars put it on top of the suspension bushes, some cars put it on the back of the engine, some cars bury it inside the engine. So we're very fortunate on this car that the oil filter is actually easy to change, which, uh, which does make a change to be honest. Now there are three things that make these a nightmare to remove. Obviously the first one I've covered depends on the location of the oil filter. As I say, sometimes they can be a nightmare, sometimes like this they're quite easy to get at, it just depends on your car. The second reason that makes it a nightmare to get out is the fact that people don't change them often enough. Some slack ass garages will simply change the oil and not bother to change the filter. There's not much point in that. And the third reason why they can be a nightmare to get out is because people over tighten them when they put them in. There is no need to use oil filter wrenches or anything like that to put oil filters in. These are designed to be put in hand tight. It even says that on the canister itself. Now fortunately for me, I put this oil filter in 6,000 miles ago, and of course I put it in just with uh, great care and attention, so it should come out relatively easily. All I'm going to use to get it out, to get a better grip on it, is a nice pair of, uh, of rubber gloves. That's all you need, a pair of uh, workman's gloves to get it out. That's all you should need to remove one of these. If they are stubborn, you can use, uh, you can use more aggressive approaches, you can use thicker gloves, you can use oil filter wrenches, or if the worst comes to the worst, you can use the good old trick of smacking a screwdriver right through the can and tearing it off that way. I'm not going to go into, into doing that because that is a very brutal approach and there are other videos out there as to how to do that. I have had to do it once or twice on cars that I've bought because, as I say, they... Um, that they, they haven't been changed often enough. And you can see here, if you look at the, the edge of the oil filter here where it butts up to the oil cooler, you can see there isn't a spot of rust on it or there isn't any signs of corrosion on the oil filter itself. If you start to see these going rusty or there's rust cans, there's rust on the can or the, the seam on the edge here is going rusty where it's butted up to the vehicle, you can quite clearly tell without even having any sort of knowledge that the oil filter is simply not changed often enough. Every 6,000 miles I would recommend on any car, no matter what the manufacturer says, 6,000 miles, you can't go wrong with that. So I'm going to put my gloves on and I'm going to show you how to remove it. But before that, it's worth noting that because of the orientation of this oil filter is tilted downwards, this has a non-return valve in it. So when we undo this oil filter, there will be a considerable amount of oil still in this that is going to pour out. Which is why I come back to my nice large bucket underneath here. Because my nice large bucket, when it's pulled, um, if I get down so we can see with the angle of the camera, what's going to happen is the oil is going to pour down the front of the engine here, the engine block. It's going to pour down here, and because my bucket is quite big, it's going to pour straight into the bucket at the front, whilst the bucket is still big enough to catch the drips at the back from the sump plug that we removed earlier. So it's worth noticing it's nice to get a nice big bucket that you can put under the engine, not have to worry about where's it going to fall, where's it going to go everywhere. Again, you can see here I've put plenty of paper down on the driveway because no matter how much you try and get oil, try and not spill oil, it will, it will get everywhere that you imagine. We can see also underneath here that the air conditioning compressor, this is the AC compressor, will get a bit of oil over the um, over the mounting points and positions here. It's not the end of the world, providing you don't douse the thing and all the belts and drive pulleys in oil. It won't matter that this gets a bit of soaking here. To be honest, it will. Uh, if I ever have to remove it, it might make it a little bit uh, a little bit easier on the upside. So don't be surprised if the oil dribbles down here and all over the sump. The bucket will uh, the bucket will catch it when it uh, when we unscrew the can. Also what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the new filter from the box. I'm going to put the new filter to one side, excuse the shadows, it's quite sunny today. And I'm going to leave the box right by the side of the car so that when I remove the old oil filter, I'm going to put it straight in this box so it's not going to roll over and tip up and spill any residual oil out of it. So I'm going to leave that there. I've got my nice, uh, my nice glove on if the camera will focus in. And I'm going to start to spin this oil filter around anti-clockwise and remove it. Oh, there it goes. You can see it turning. It will be quite stiff at first to remove, but eventually it should spin off like that. There shouldn't be any difficulty removing these if the oil filters are changed at the correct time. 
and the fact that they are uh, the fact that they aren't uh, they aren't wailed up with a um, with an oil filter wrench you should never use as I said before you should never use a wrench for putting these things in now what's going to happen is as soon as I start to unscrew this the oil is going to start to flow from underneath and dribble into the bucket but I'm not worried about that the bucket will catch it what I am going to do is as soon as it's detached from the engine I'm going to tip it upright so that any more residual oil isn't going to fall out I can hear the oil draining out underneath let's just see where it's coming off you can see here it's dribbling down the sump you see that now dribbling down the sump and the uh, the bucket is catching it quite nicely so again don't worry about that if the bucket if the bucket's big enough it should catch the uh, the engine oil now as i say this varies on different cars so if your car oil filter is in a different place don't be surprised if it pours out of every single orifice you will you will get to know once you've changed your filter a couple of times where to put the bucket and where to catch the oil so don't be surprised if it comes out where it's unexpected just make sure you put plenty of paper down so back in here when the camera focuses in, here we go, I'm going to unspin the rest of the can, get ready to catch it, don't let it drop down everywhere. And again, I'm keeping the can pushed into the vehicle until I can feel the threads clicking over, when I know it's fully undone. Like that, tip it upwards, and there it is. I've tipped it up so that any more oil inside isn't going to fall out everywhere. And again, no problem access on this vehicle, I can pull the filter up and have it straight out in one go. As I said before, what I'm going to do, I'm now going to place it inside this container which has handily fallen over. I don't know if you can see inside there, but that thing is still quite full of oil. And it's very handy to have this thing here, just to place it in, to keep it steady, so it's not going to fall over and do a mischief. Here we have our new oil filter, it's fresh out the box, it's made by a company called Fram, as I say plenty of other brands are available, this is just the one I happen to have on the shelf, I've removed a Bosch one, as you can see there the blue one was a Bosch, this is made by Fram. Now before we screw this on, it's, uh, I'm going to show you a little age -old, age old trick to get it to seal properly, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it down, I'm going to open our new bottle of oil, he says, Argh. My silver foil cap, we're going to poke through the cap, and all I'm going to do, I'm just going to dip my finger into the can, wherever the oil is, there's the oil, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to run my finger around the seal here, nicely, uh, nicely greasing up the seal, and what this will do is this will allow the seal, when it hits the engine, or the oil cooler in my case, this actually bolts onto an oil cooler, I'm going to put some, a little bit around the thread on the inside just to aid it coming on, well, it doesn't need a lot, just enough to, uh, to take the dryness off it. And this will aid it to butt up to the rest of the engine when we slip it on. Remove the cap back onto the uh, oil can, just to stop terrible things happening. So what we're going to do now, we're going to bolt this, and screw this back onto the car. I'll stop hands here with the camera. And we can see down here where it bolts onto. Very careful not to cross thread it. It shouldn't take any effort like this. I should be able to spin it on if I haven't cross threaded it. I should be able to spin it on with one finger like that. Literally, it should go on easy as that. If you if you're having to force it, then uh, you know it's uh, you know it's cross threaded. As I say here, we're not going to do it up hell tight. What we're going to do, we're going to do it up as tight as we can reasonably get it by hand. It doesn't need to be wailed up to the point where your eyes are popping out. And there we go. And that's on quite nicely. It doesn't need anything more than that. That's all it needs to be nice and secure onto the engine. Well, hopefully by now the rest of the oil should have drained out into the bucket. But before we put the sump plug back, I'm just going to give it a little clean. You can see here it's uh, it's a bit filthy. It's worth noticing, of course, sump plugs will usually, 99% of the times, have washers on them. And you can see on this just about that there is actually a uh, small steel washer on this sump plug. Some cars have copper washers. Some cars, a Renault Clio I dealt with in the past, had a copper washer with a rubber seal built into it. It was really a load of crap, that thing, to be honest. It, uh, it did nothing but leak. I replaced it with this rubber, a, um, a steel washer, and it was perfectly fine. Most manufacturers recommend that you do change the washer every time you do the, uh, the, the oil change, but to be honest, I've changed the oil five or six, seven times on this vehicle now, and that is the original washer that came with it when I bought it. So as long as you take care with it, there isn't really a problem with changing the washers. 
So I'm just going to give this a clean up and we're going to stick this back in the engine and uh, refill her with oil. Okay, as you can see, I've replaced the uh, the sump plug here after cleaning it. No longer to do now. I'm just going to put the socket on. I'm just going to tighten it. And when I mean tighten it, I don't mean wail it up like your wheel nuts on the car. These do not need to be hell tight. All I'm going to do, I'm going to put the socket on and just going to give it a tweak up. That's it. That's all it needs. It doesn't need to be done hell tight to the point where you're swinging on it. And as I said before, your eyes are popping out. It just needs a gentle pull. And that's it. It's tight. It's done. The oil isn't on end under any pressure in there. There's no pressure behind it. It just needs to prevent the oil from leaking out under gravity. It doesn't need to be done to the point where you're going to strip the thread. So what I'm going to do now, you can see there's a few uh, spots of oil over the sump from where we changed the filter. I'm just going to clean up underneath here. Go around with a bit of a with a bit of a dry rag just to clean up the oil. Then we're going to refill her again and see what happens. Now comes the exciting part, the part where we're going to fill her with oil. Now various cars have the oil filler ports in various places. Most of the modern cars have the filler ports right on the back of the engine on the on the on the actual um, valve cover. But this car is different, the old Peugeot XUD9 engine. It has the oil filler is located underneath the dipstick. But it's a bit hard to get to on this car because of the expansion bottle for the cooling system. So quite simply, all I'm going to do for this video is just loosen this nut and we're going to move the expansion bottle out of the way. It often pays to do things like this. I know people, uh, I've seen people struggle in the past, but realistically, how much effort does it take to do that and just to move it out of the way while we, while we refill it with oil? If you unplug that, it should move even further. Again, there's no harm doing that, just to give us extra room down the side here whilst we are changing, whilst we are replacing the oil. If I move that a bit further, the lighting should be better as well. So what I'm going to do here, I'm not going to use a funnel because I'm going to live life on the dangerous side. And um, we need to know that the capacity of the car, I've checked in the logbook of this one, again your car will be different, to the capacity of the engine oil. And it's quite handy that in this car, the capacity of the engine oil is 4 litres, and of course they sell it in the 4 litre bottle. So very handy indeed. I'm going to undo the bottle now. I'm going to also remove this little red uh, clip that goes around it, because sometimes that can fall off into the, uh, into the abyss of the, um, of the engine, so we don't want that happening. And the tip for pouring oil, when the, when the thing is full like this brand new, tip it like that so that it doesn't glug and gargle everywhere. We don't want it to, we don't want it firing all over the insides of the engine bay. Not with very expensive oil like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start, and I apologise if you can't see on the camera, but I'm just going to start and pour the oil straight in. Like so. It's the majority of it in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the bottle upside down and leave it here to drain out for the next couple of minutes. And then wedge the bottle like that just to allow the dregs to drain out for the next couple of minutes. Now that the dregs of the oil have drained out, I'm going to remove the oil can. As I say, not a lot left in that. Might as well get your money's worth when this thing's about 35, 40 pounds a bottle. Place the cap back on, remove the nice bit of paper protecting everything. Screw the cap back on. And I've also given the dipstick a nice wipe and a clean as well whilst I was at it. So we're going to pop the dipstick back in. I've also, um, for the making of this video, I've also removed the uh, expansion bottle for the cooling system just to make it uh, that bit easier to get the uh, the oil can in there. It's amazing the number of times I see people struggling when all it takes is to undo one nut like that. That's nice and secure. Back in there and plug an electrical connector back on. For the, for the effort it takes just to make it that bit easier, you know, why not? Why struggle when you can just remove something as easy as that? Okay, the vehicle is back on the ground, the engine is full of oil, and now comes the moment to, st to, to start the engine. A lot of people would simply get in the car now and turn the key and hope for the best, but 
I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it the very old-fashioned, traditional way. You don't have to do this, but I do. It, this is this is the absolute textbook way of starting an engine once you've changed the oil, especially on a vehicle like this, which is turbocharged. Now, this engine is quite quite easy to do it on because it is an old, uh, very old-fashioned, simple diesel engine. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to prohibit the engine from starting by disconnecting this wire that goes to the uh, that goes to the fuel solenoid. So I'm going to pull this wire off. And by doing that, I've now prohibited the engine from starting because the fuel valve will not open. So what I'm simply going to do now inside the vehicle is I'm looking for when the oil pressure light will extinguish. The difficulty is if I started the engine now and let the engine fire, what would happen is the engine would run and the oil pressure light would still be on. And of course the engine is running of course whilst the oil filter is filling with oil, whilst the oil galleries are filling with oil and of course the turbocharger, the cams, nothing else in the engine, the piston rings, nothing is being lubricated whilst there is no oil pressure. And what I'm going to do now, I've, as I've said before, I've disabled the engine from starting, so the engine will not start now, and I'm going to turn the engine over on the starter motor until the oil pressure light extinguishes. And you'll be surprised at how long this takes for the oil pressure light to go out. So watch this oil pressure light where my finger is, and watch how long it takes for it to go out when I crank the engine. See how long it took for it to go out? That's how long it takes for the oil pressure to build up in an engine that's had the oil uh, that's had the oil change. So of course, for those five or six seconds, the engine, if I were to allow it to start, would have been running with absolutely no oil pressure whatsoever. And here's an also good indication that uh, that the engine oil level is also fine. This vehicle is actually equipped with an engine oil level indicator, which tells me the engine oil level in the sump is up to its uh, maximum limit. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to reconnect that wire on the solenoid, allow the engine to start, and hopefully the oil pressure light should extinguish immediately. Okay guys, I've checked the oil level in the car, I've reconnected the fuel solenoid so the engine should start. So, until another 6,000 miles go by, I'll see you later.